everyone! Today we have another watercoloring tutorial and this time we are walking through how to paint a snow leopard step by step. I know this might be a little bit intimidating animal to paint, so I really try to slower the pace in this tutorial and explain you every step on the way. I'm gonna use my Kensen watercolor paper today, which is more on the cheaper side, because I don't think this painting requires anything too fancy. I cut out this roughly 22 times 18 centimeter piece, which is pretty big size for me, and I'd actually really recommend painting this in a pretty large size, so you have a lot of space to work with and the details won't get too muddy. I found myself some pretty reference pictures that we're gonna use as the guide today, but then let's just get started with the first step in this whole process, which is of course drawing a pencil sketch. I think the sketching part is probably the most important step in the whole process, so I'm trying to walk it through very slowly. I don't usually use guidelines when I draw, but I think this time the eyes are pretty much in the center of the face. So if you want, you could start with these three lines where the top and bottom line the perimeter of the face and the middle one shows the height of the eyes. The face is also pretty much symmetrical on both sides, which makes things much easier for us. So you can also go ahead and draw a line right down the center. But then I usually like to start by defining the outer shape first. So I started by finding the placements for the ears. Then I sketched some loose lines around the edges of the face and then started to sketch the eyes and nose as well. I think a pretty good measurement for the eyes here is that there's around one and a half eyes width between them, and then the nose is slightly above the line we drew in the beginning. However, just as us humans, animals all look different and there's no one right mold for the dimensions, so if your kitty ends up with a longer nose or bigger eyes than mine, that's all good. The nose width lines pretty well with the space between the eyes and then the snout itself will widen slightly and then the chin usually is more narrow and has a very fluffy hair that you don't even need to define that much. I would say that really take your time with this first outline and get confident with the shape because then everything will be much easier from here. Also, sometimes it might be a good idea to take a small break and come back to the drawing with fresh eyes. Or something I like to do often is to take the drawing and look at it from the mirror. Our eyes get very blind to the drawing if we stare at it for a long time. So for example, I noticed that my nose and mouth were not completely in the middle here. So I fixed that before moving on to the next part. But now that we have the outline in place, we can start to focus on the smaller details. I think a big part of drawing leopards or tigers are the black face patterns. So I started to sketch them out in this face, as well as darken some of the other black areas. So I remember to color them dark later. I feel like especially the area of the eyes changes a lot after adding all these black details around here. 
and I feel like in a way those are what eyebrows are for human. So all of these black details, especially around the eyes, really help to bring an expression to the face and also show the shape underneath the fur. Also, if you're wondering, I didn't really mind leaving a lot of pencil strokes here because most of them will be covered under the black paints later and the others you can lightly erase or just leave there. This time all the colors will be more on the bluish gray side so the pencil lines won't really stand out from the final picture. I personally like to leave the eye details last because I feel like the eyes never look good in the sketching phase so it just helps a little bit to have everything else around them ready so at least it makes your animal look a little bit less derpy in this point and if you really struggle with the eyes honestly just ignore them for now and let's get back to them in the coloring phase. But now that we finally have this sketch ready, we're gonna grab the watercolors and start to add some color. I'm using these three different sized brushes today and we are starting with the biggest one and moving to the thinner detailing brush as we progress. But for now, we're starting with a very simple background layer of just some light gray tones all over the painting. I usually have some leftover colors all over my painting palette that I use to mix colors because I'm too lazy to wash my palette for every tutorial. But this time I mixed a little bit of blue and brown to my black watercolor and those are pretty much all the colors we're gonna use today. I feel like adding a tiny bit of those two colors makes the tones at least a little bit more lively but then you can just start to swipe this color all over the sketch we just drew. There were actually very few areas that I left completely white in this painting and those were only the lower part of the nose area, then the outer edges of the cheeks and some stripes in the ears. But otherwise I went over everything with the grey tone, though in some of the lighter areas I tried to use a very light hand. You can always get the colors darker, so starting to add the colors little by little is usually the best way to go in my opinion. The 
The painting probably won't look like much at this point, but after we start to build all the details here, it will slowly start to look better and come to life. So next, I felt like it was a very good time to start to define all the black details because at least for me, it's usually very difficult to judge the darkness of the shadows if I don't have the darkest points as a reference. So this is where I switched to the medium-sized brush and I'm using it for this first detailing layer. I had my reference picture open the whole time I was painting and I feel like it especially helps in this point when you're trying to figure out the placements of the lights and shadows. It also might help to focus on a very small area at the time, but every now and then it's also good to kind of take a step back and look at your painting from a longer distance. Then after we have some dark details in place, it's the moment everyone's been dreading, so I decided that now it would be a good time to color the eyes. I'm not sure if the eyes of a snow leopard are actually blue, at least they weren't in most of the pictures I found online, but that's the fun part of painting, you can color the eyes however you want. So I tried to keep the blue tones pretty bright in this one, and this is also the point where I decided to switch to the smallest detailing brush I have. There's really no right way to color the eyes, so this time I tried to keep the outer rims a little bit lighter and then color the center part much darker than that. Then I also left some white reflection dots because I personally find it very pretty. And if you accidentally go over the area you left for the white dots, kind of like I did here on the second eye, you can use any white pen or even white gouache paint to get them back. Otherwise, I usually think it looks nice if there's some texture in the eyes. I know that sounds weird, but what I mean is that they are not completely smooth color. So I added some darker spots and lines here and there, and then tried to slightly darken the very edges and the deepest corners of the eyes a little bit. I know painting eyes might feel a little bit difficult and intimidating, but I promise you'll get used to it by just practicing throwing them over and over again.
But after the eyes, it's time for the actual final detailing phase. So I continued using this small brush and just kept adding some more shadows, first strokes and just details here and there. This is the part where you could honestly use as much time as you want and the more you keep polishing your painting, you will probably get closer to photo realism. I didn't really take this one that far, but anyway, I think using this small brush definitely helps to replicate the thin first strokes. So for example, I just went over some of the black areas I painted with the medium brush and just added some more strokes on top of them. Then if you feel like you want even thinner details, you can always reach for a thin black pen and add some finishing touches with it and same with a white paint. I think this picture would have probably benefited from some thin white wash lines. Especially in the ears, I think having some white strokes on top of the darker colors would really make the fur pop a little bit more. But I was kind of in a hurry while filming this, so I didn't have time and energy to start perfecting everything like that. But I still wanted to mention that option to you in case you want to try it at home. But after the last strokes and shading, that's finally it for this snow leopard. I chose not to paint the neck and body this time, so we could really focus on this head shape. But again, you could always change that at home. I really hope you liked this tutorial and found the pace comfortable. It's always a little bit difficult for me to balance between two boring slow tutorials and two fast tutorials where you don't see anything. So all feedback about that is always very welcome. And also, if you'd like to see me paint some more animals in the future, let me know what they could be. Anyway, if this was your first time on the channel and you'd like to stay tuned for more, please consider subscribing. But other than that, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.